I got, I got to say, Mike, this is the most random location I've done this at. So, you know, it's not like you uh, need to be famous for that or anything, but it's a, it's a very random location. I feel special there. <laughs> but there's no doubt that you're special, Mike. Everybody I asked said, oh, that's special Mike. Yeah. Not, not magic, Mike, but, you know, same but different. You might have a bigger budget if you became magic, Mike. That would be true. Uh, hello, Ken Dickinson, Malcolm Crib, Crib in the Crib. So we are right now, uh, you are in Fremont, Iowa. Is that what you said, Mike? Yep, that's where I'm at, Fremont, Iowa. Okay, so you are in Morristown, New South Wales, Australia. So I just want to make sure that you, there'll be a test later. I'll say, where am I, Mike? And you'll go, Australia. Yeah, New South Wales, Australia. Oh, beautiful. Well, see now, you being a Knoxville regular, the term New South Wales, Australia is something you would have heard a million times. Definitely, yep. Between Skip, Brooke, Kerry, Ian, Linton. Yep. Like, there's just a ton of people so, uh, that come from this area. So a lot of people tuning in, a lot of Brent Bishop. Josh Heights, Todd Price, Sam Warwick. Hope the audio is working okay. I am actually, Morris Sam was a place that in the 70s, 60s and 70s, I think had a really cool hot rod speedway that they used to race all kinds of uh, speedway. I'm now at a soccer oval just down the road from there. Just pulled back uh, off the highway to have a chat with my friend, Mike Mayberry, who is the current Knoxville Raceway Pro Sprint Track Champion. That's got a feel good when you hear all those words in the one sentence mike that does feel good yes been been trying for a while now so glad that now, we finally tell me where it. Fremont is. um Fremont's located between Atumla, iowa and oskaloosa and we're roughly 48 miles from knoxville Atumla. now if you're a mash fan if you're not what are you thinking I mean, come on now. Now, I was bitterly disappointed, mate. I, I drove past many times the sign that come out, and I'm like, oh, my God, choppers. You know, I was excited. I was thinking it's the home of Gary Burkhoff, the legendary Raider O'Reilly. I made some inquiries. He didn't even live there. He lived in Florida. Yep, never lived Never lived in Tumwa. But, boy, didn't the city get some worldwide exposure? I bet there's a ton of people that go through a Tumwa every year thinking that they're going to find him there. I would imagine you're right. So tell me about your life in, in racing up. Where did your passion for uh, for sprint car racing come from, Mike? Uh, when I was probably 10, my dad took me to my first race at Knoxville. And that was just pretty much how I was hooked. Um, I probably, like I said, I've been there since I was 10. Um, I made the comment at the banquet last year that actually I was a huge Terry McCarl fan. It was kind of neat. He won the 360s and... Uh, I was also Brian Brown won the four tens, and I was actually at Knoxville for his first race. So I've, I've been going a long time there. That's the that's one of the many beauties of Knoxville, Mayberry. It's the history of the place, and you have your own story from when you were a little kid. Do you remember where you sat? Uh, yeah, we actually sat in a double B, uh, roughly row twenty, and uh, that's where we still have our nationals tickets. So I've sat there for the last, like I said, uh, close to 30 years. BB. Did you say BB? BB. So in my brain, I'm hearing people calling out section. Yep, BB. Now, <laughs> for, for those people that have never been to the Knoxville Nationals, it's like that's the section where anybody that went to Happy Gilmore to watch golf is going to hang out because that's right. there was all night. It's like section, B, B, A, yep. B, and they they just <laughs> go at each other all night. It's an incredible experience. Yes, it is. It's not. It's a. It's a good place to sit. You know the crazy bit is, Mike. There's even some Knoxville, uh, Marion County Fair Board members that sit in that section. So it's not really. Yeah, I couldn't say who out loud, but uh, they know who they are. They actually sit in that area. So, Mike, what do you remember about that first night with your dad? And isn't it cool too, mate? That story is so uh, similar to so many people that went with their dad or their grandpa the first time to any race. Yep, 
Yep. Uh, I don't really remember too much probably about the race itself. Um, I just remember the cars and then they were fast and loud and I was pretty much hooked after seeing about five minutes of it. In the region that you live in, mm -hmm. unless you are completely baseball or football focused, there's no way you can't know about the sport of sprint car racing growing up in that area. That's another incredible part about the footprint of the Knoxville Raceway is if you're a kid in Iowa, you're going to race an IMCA modified or you're going to race a sprint car at Knoxville. Yep, exactly. Exactly. There's uh, obviously Oskaloosa, which isn't too far from me. We race a stock car, or a B mod or a modified, but yeah, or Knoxville. Yep, those are two choices. I apologize if you can hear some Australian wildlife in the background. There's all kinds of stuff. If you're just joining me, I'm here with the Pro Sprint Knoxville Raceway track champion, Mike Mayberry. I'm just going to say that a lot for you, Mike, so you, you keep being, being reminded. And I'm in Morissette in New South Wales, Australia, which is about ah, 45 minutes from Newcastle, and it's about an hour and a half from Sydney. I've just pulled over on the side of the road so Mike and I can catch up for our Wednesday night slide. The, uh, this morning, my time, about three hours ago, we had our weekly Knoxville Nationals Fan Experience Committee meeting, Mike. And what we're doing is a group of about six of us, and we're working on refining and developing and and just making the whole fan experience even better. Because I don't know about you, mate, but the racing is almost secondary at the Knoxville Nationals. It's a bonus because everything else you do in that week is what makes it special. Oh, it definitely is. I mean, it's a it's a week unique, I think, probably from anywhere else in the country as far as racing is concerned. Um, it's just, it's so neat to see that that town balloon up in, in population and uh, everybody seems to really get along and everyone's there to have a good time. Yeah, absolutely. So the bug of obviously sitting there with your dad at that first night at Knoxville when Terry McCall, did he punch anyone that night? Do you remember, or was he just just racing? No, I don't think he. I don't think he punched anybody that night. Oh, well, <laughs> he's just racing. He likes to mix. He likes to mix it up a little. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, how long was it from the time that you were sitting there with Dad till the first time you rolled out onto Knoxville Raceway? Uh, let's see, probably about fifteen or sixteen years, I guess. And did, did dad ever race? Like, where did this bug come from? Nope. Just a race fan. Uh, my dad was just a race fan um, growing up, and he never raced anything himself. But uh, he had, he was kind of a drag racing fan when he was younger. I um, used to go, like, the Indy Nationals over in Indianapolis. and um, But then he just he moved to the Ottumwa area for work and just started going to Knoxville and then just started taking me. You know what? Living in your area, being a drag racing fan doesn't suck either. Because if I if I remember rightly, there's a little joint called Eddyville not far from there. Yep, yep, that's true. Yep, that's pretty. It's a pretty nice facility. So, what led you to sprint car racing? Did you start off there? Did you race carts first, or where did you start? Um, I started with a 305 sprint car. Um, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I never raced anything else. We actually looked at buying a modified. It looked like there was way too many adjustments on that thing that I'd screw it up really bad. So I just decided to go with the sprint car. I love them. And uh, that's just where we started. And that's where we stayed. If you're a sprint car fan from outside of America or even outside of Iowa, you might not know that IMCA racing is huge. I mean, like the Super Nationals at Boone. I don't know if you've ever been to that. That's like... I have not. Oh wow, you Mike, you need to. <laughs> it's hard to put That's that on my bucket, bucket list. It's like um, Woodstock on uh, and Walmart on dirt. It's a phenomenal culture. But the beautiful part is the two biggest races in the world for dirt, in terms of fender racing and sprint cars, are held in Iowa. As an Iowa man, do you feel that sense of pride? And I should have asked you this: which college football team first? Uh, I don't really get caught up in that. In that, uh, ah, smart really, man. Really, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, today, today you can be a Hawkeyes fan with me. All right. So don't worry about those Cyclones. We'll okay. talk about that until later. All right. <laughs> so you're three oh five. Do you remember how did you how did you scrap the money together to go racing with that? Uh, it's actually a funny story. So I I uh, bought my first house when I was about twenty years old, um, and remodeled it. Uh, my parents actually had moved out of state. 
Um, so I decided to stay around the area and it was in Ottumwa. And I bought my first house and uh, just worked a lot, paid it off and then went back to the bank and borrowed some money against the house to get a sprint car. Did you tell <laughs> him that's what the it was smartest for? thing to do? I did not tell him what it was for. <laughs> Renovations, Mike? Is that what you're doing? Renovations? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's beautiful. And, and what, what do you remember that first time? It must have been on your mind when you first rolled into that pit gate, into the center, the first time you ever did that as a racer. Can you remember what that felt like? Uh, just a lot of nerves. <laughs> yeah, just a lot of nerves. And I know, knew I spent a lot of money that I didn't have at the time. So I wanted to make sure that I brought it home in one piece. Did you hot lap anywhere else first or did you just go, screw it, I'm going to the Marion County Fairgrounds. I'm going to the home of the sprint car capital of the world. No, we actually started with the series that basically was based in Bloomfield, Iowa. Um, and we ran that series for the first, uh, well, from 2005 till 2009. Um, and then I had a couple of kids that were getting a little bit older where they started getting into their own sports stuff. Yep. And after after 2008, we we won a championship with that class, with that series in 2007, um, and then in 2008 we finished second. And I just quit and started coaching my kids and uh, had a son that played baseball and a daughter played softball. Yeah, well, family family has got to come first, and uh, yep. and it's a difficult trade off because racing is a very selfish sport, Mike. Yes, it is. It sucks up yeah. too, far too much of our time, you know, and uh, I know, I know my, my son, Riley, uh, he's, his birthday every year is August 12th. So you okay. can imagine where I am uh, when sure. I should be, you know, sharing time with my kids. So I, I, really, I really get that. So you took some time away from uh, that before you came back. But I want to ask you, how different does Knoxville look when you're on the track? Like that first night you ran there, did everything seem different from the outside being on the inside? Uh, yeah, it did. Um, it it actually seems to me it almost seems a little bit smaller when you're on the track. Really? Um, it just yeah, it doesn't seem quite as big um, as far as the track wise. Um, it, seems, it just seems a little bit smaller, but um, it's still fun. It's still the best track in the world. So absolutely, Mike. It's a momentum game for your rival sprint racing very much so if you get that thing kicked up in the corner there's going to be a bunch of guys going to rip right by you because you you aren't overly blessed with power and i say that with respect so you, sure. you have to keep that hot rod in a straight line as best you can particularly at knox yeah knox we definitely have to drive as straight as you can um, and like you said um really have to be smooth every anywhere on the track you're at um with this class it was it was nice last year. Um, they started and they, they always do a great job prepping the track, but last year due to the tire issues um, availability they had, they let the track a little bit wetter um, starting with, and it actually created a uh, kind of a middle groove that we haven't maybe seen in the past at Knoxville um, or for a long time, and uh, which I thought was great. I mean, I, I think if you can have three lanes of racing, I think that's, that's really what you want on any racetrack, truthfully. Yeah, absolutely. Do you feel, uh, I mean, it, it's all business for you. You've got to race your, your BAWL fives off to, to win every race you can, and that's what you're there for. But can you still get a sense of privilege that you are racing at a place like Knoxville? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I feel I'm truly blessed just to be able to race at Knoxville, um, be able to own a sprint car. Um, I've been blessed to have a job that's I'm able to afford it. Um, and, yeah, it, it doesn't really matter – win or lose, or if you have a bad night, um, you still should be thankful that you get to do something that really most people won't ever get to experience in their lifetime. Mike, um, people would look at pro sprints from the stands as either a starting point or a, a step through or somewhere that would someone would stay their whole career. Where do you see those three? Are you a mix of that or are you a 305 or pro sprint guy forever? Um, I, I'm just a pro sprint guy forever. Um, I'll be honest with you, like doing this kind of stuff, I'm not very good at. And uh, so I'm not very good at getting sponsorship. I, I don't like asking people um, for money for my hobby, I guess. That's just me personally. Um, so I, I always knew that I could never move up. 
I knew I'd never be able to have the money to move up. So I've always been a 305 guy. Um, but I think it's great because it's, especially with the Pro Series engine, the sealed engine, the only thing you can do is change the oil and serve share cleaner and really serves carburetor. So it's great for people just starting so they can kind of focus on how to set up a sprint car in, in every other task you have to do. And then for guys like myself, it's affordable. Um, there's real, realistically, our cars aren't too much different. They're, most of the cars in our class now are just as nice as any 360 car. And yeah. probably just as nice as, as half, if not more than the 410s. Um, so the cars are all the same. It's just that engine is cheap. I, I think you can buy one now for about 19,000. And most guys are, I know two, two racers in at least, maybe possibly more that had gotten over 50 nights on the engine before they had to service it, had, before it had to be rebuilt. So how many nights I don't think would you do in a season, man? Like not just Knoxville, you race other places. How many nights would you run? Um, if you really wanted to, you could probably get, if you get all of Knoxville, you could probably pick up another three to five. So you're probably in the 20, 22 range, maybe. So you get two seasons out of an engine before you have to freshen. Yeah, and if you just race Knoxville, it's closer to three, three and a half. Okay. Yep. Are the principles the same in your setup, Mike, with, you know, running a 305 compared to a 360 compared to a 410? I mean, you're, the horsepower differences are there. The lightweight difference, the higher you go. But are the, the basic setup principles the same? Uh, yeah. Yep. And uh, most of your, a lot of your chassis manufacturers will have recommendations that truthfully we, we run a triple X and I, I feel they're really good with uh, driver support. And so they, they give you a pretty good base um, from a three, 305 to a 360 to a 410. Tell me about the community of Pro Sprint. I mean, uh, I always loved hanging out with Eric Bridger and I love Scotty Johnson, yep. hot shot. In fact, yep. if I remember rightly, though, the three of you guys were in the final A main, like battling it out right in the, at the to the very end. I think Eric's gone away from the sport for a little while. I hope he comes back. But there seems to be a really great community of racer. Yeah, I think uh, that's what makes our class so nice is that um, we all get along. Um, and we all will – everybody's there to have a good time and help each other. If anybody can help each other, they will. Um, and I – Bridgers always used to park next to us. We were we were pit pit buddies for the last I don't know five six years. So yeah, they're they're Eric and his parents are great people, and I'll, we'll definitely miss them this year. Yeah, for sure. The size of not from a pro sprint point of view, those straightaways have got to be pretty long and big mm -hmm. long corners. So we're kind of like doing that most of the time. How does it compare to a, a smaller little joint that might just be down the road, a high bank little bull ring, for example? Um, in the, the smaller track, you just have to really turn the car. Um, you really have, as a driver, you really have to get in there and turn the car. Whereas Knoxville, generally speaking, your setup, it's the car is going to turn itself. Um, so you're just kind of, like you said, just barely making very, very little mo movements at Knoxville compared to a smaller track where you really have to really turn the steering wheel. It's funny, every time an Aussie comes over to race at Knoxville for the first time, Mike, I take them straight over to Skip Jackson. I say, come here, Skip, what are you going to tell them? That he tells every Aussie, and he says, don't turn at the flag stand. Because yeah. uh, we're so used to you know, the corner being struck so quick after the flag stand. Is that the same with Pro Sprint? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's the same, really, in, in any car. Um if you, when you go from a short track to a big track, that's probably your hardest thing to change is just not getting yourself not to turn the race car, um, just letting it do the work. Mike, a lot of Aussies, uh, young young Aussies, want to come over and work on race cars, right? It's their thing. They want to come over to the nationals and do their thing and work on these cars. Pro sprint racing is starting to emerge in Australia a lot more now. Have you ever had Aussie crew guys? And would you ever entertain the idea of someone coming over just to work on some spanners and give you a hand? Uh, I've never had any, but yeah, I'm always, I'd, I'd entertain the idea. Um, I've always liked to interact with people and, uh, you know, help people or have them show me maybe a different way they do things. 
Well, we, we bring our own Vegemite and we like drinking beer. So, you know, <laughs> at least one yeah, of those. Yeah, I don't mind drinking beer. Yeah, I knew you would say that. I got to love the, what I can see of your top wing looks really nice, Mike. Just swing your head to one Thank side you. so you can see your top wing. Woo, that looks pretty right there. Yeah, thank you. We did. We ran that car. Actually, that was our COVID car. That was the first car, first chassis I ever bought new. Um, and it's got about six nights on it. We we ran drink COVID year. I think it's had seven races on it. And then I bought a new another new car. And uh, it's just sat in the shop since. Now, a few people are asking on here about the weather. How's the weather at Knoxville? Well, the way I hear it, it's supposed to be a little moist on Friday. And a little moist on Sunday, but it's looking real good on Saturday. So that's what I'm going with, okay? I sure hope so. Yeah, I'm getting it, – it's, it's been like a – it's just been like a hurricane or a tornado here. Last couple of days, wind's been so strong. But, uh, yeah, hopefully the we'll miss the rain this week and get finally get one in. Because you already did a little bit of rain. You said the car's good. Yeah, we, that's kind of what's made this, like I was told earlier, that's kind of what's made this month so bad is we've been rained out before, but normally it's taking practice night also. Um, but we got practice night in, the car rolled around real nice, and so then you get real anxious to race, and now we haven't been able to. Now, my friend Kevin Mosher is just saying here that Mike was real quick to help us last year. I'm not going to tell people that you don't want a track championship just as bad as McCall's or Brown's or Jamie Balls or any of those guys, but it's, it's in your best interest as a racer, Mike, to encourage the new guys to get ahead around their, their setup. You don't need a guy that you're running behind at that speed to not fully understand what their race car is doing. So I would think that there's probably a little bit more of that side by side. I'll help you out. Hey, what are you doing with that? You should be doing this. Is that the way it works? Uh, I always try to look at it that way. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer anybody's questions when they come and ask um, or if they have a problem, need a part possibly or just need some advice. Because like I said, um, I think it makes the racing better if if we're all yeah. fast. Um, you don't you, you hate to see a guy struggle and you, you want us because if if they struggle long enough, they won't want to do it and they'll leave. And they'll go do something else. And so we don't want to see that. We want to see everybody have success. And let's face it, a more predictable car alongside you on the racetrack has got to be a good thing for everyone. Oh, it's definitely a good thing for everyone, for sure. How many hours a week do you spend on your hot rod? Are you, is it comparative to, it doesn't matter if it's a 360 or 410, the, the shop hours are all the same? Uh, probably not quite as bad with our class, just due to the fact like it's, it's a sealed engine, so you can't, there is no motor maintenance per se. Um, you do have to change oil. We do that about every third race and service air filter about every two races. Um, but other than that, we don't have to run the valves or anything like that. Um, it's carbureted instead of fuel injected. So there's no nozzles to clean. Uh, so that probably saves, I'm going to guess, probably in three or four hours in the shop, maybe. Um, we're not as hard on tires. So our tires last longer. Um, so there's a little time there. So I try to spend... I would say on average, we probably I probably spend maybe eight hours a week on my car. That's not too bad. No, it's not too bad. Yeah, right. Justin Clark just popped up here saying Mike's a great racer. Looking forward to seeing you soon. And I, I love that you've got Wally Price, the Hall of Famer in the pace truck. I love that you got Doug Clark tucked away down in turn three and four where he can't get in any trouble anymore. You got <laughs> Justin in the flag stand. You got you got Tony B and Chris Krug upstairs. You've got Eric Arnold on the PR. I, I always like it Knoxville Raceway to a big aircraft carrier. It's like USS Knoxville. Everybody has their role, and everyone makes you feel part of the team there. Sure, and that's I mean a testament to all those guys. Um, any, anybody I've ever dealt with at Knoxville, Justin or Doug or Tony or um, Mike Prophet, John McCoy, yeah. Connie McCoy. Um, everybody's super nice, helpful, uh, always, always gone off Wally. Um, everybody just really makes you feel welcome. I always say that Connie McCoy is the boss of Knoxville Raceway. I would believe you to be true. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one that's always looking after me when I've lost something or I need something at the last minute. She's kind of like the, uh, babysitter of, of an entire infield really, isn't she? Yeah, she seems to she seems to 
be very professional and always know what's going on. That's for sure. I love the fact too, that you've got, you just mentioned before, Mike Prophet, you know, who's been around the game a long time and now he's, his grandson is, uh, is doing mm-hmm. a, a heck of a job as well. So it sort of, it flows down, but I also love that voice on the infield. This is your B mate. Yeah. Um, Fisher. Yep. And I remember like, if he's been there, I'm not sure how long he's been there, but for, I remember that voice for as long as I can't can remember one anyway. He hasn't missed a night in like 40 something years, like not even one night. I thought I was doing pretty good, not missing any night in 10 years, but let alone 40. So, well, as a racer, what you're saying is still pretty impressive. Now, Randy Hikes is saying, hey, don't forget the 99 Stelzer guys. Oh, those guys are great guys, too. So, you had all those. Oh, yeah. No, Randy's a good guy. And Matthew and Scott, all those guys are great. Um, Like I said, I really can't say enough about. I was, I was a little bit disappointed to see Tyler Gruen and Dyke move up. And, but, yeah. uh, you know, Tyler and Allen and James, those, those guys are great guys. And I wish them success in the 360s and hate to see them go. But, um, yeah, we're all kind of – we've all kind of been in the pits. And there's not been a, too many new people recently. So we've all kind of had three or four years to, to learn everybody and know everybody. And, like I said, it's, it's a good group to race with. Boy, I love the way I can always spot American names when they pop up on here. You know, I could, my friend Robert Lake is tuned in and he's from Victoria, Australia. He's a great photographer. But then I see a name. This has got to be a quintessential American name, Peggy Sue. You know what? If, I, if it wasn't for those great old, yeah, Peggy Sue, Peggy Sue. It wasn't for those really great songs in the 50s and 60s and happy days. And Peggy Sue yep. is saying that you rock, dude. So I guess she's going well, to. I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You, how do you go with merch? Do you sell merch and stuff as well in pro sprints? Uh, we we do. I'm I'm not very good at it. Um, I have a I didn't buy any, I didn't I didn't get any t-shirts made for this year yet. Um, just kind of slow on that this year. Um, but yeah, we normally I think uh, probably over maybe half or a little bit over half t-shirts in our class. Yeah, good. How old are your kids now? Right? Uh, Tanner's 25, then Taylor's 20. So. So they're both out of the house and on to their own lives. You're an empty nester. Isn't that the term? Yes. That they- yep. Now, do they ever want to race? Uh, Tanner never really did. He was more into dirt bikes. Um, Taylor raced a go-kart when she was in high school. Yep. Um, she, went to co- she went to college and she's just getting ready. She actually took a job at the hospital in Knoxville uh, last week. So when she graduates, she'll be at least working in Knoxville. Um, I did build her a sprint car. Um, she hot lapped it once. Um, nice. But I don't know. I don't know if she'll get. I don't know if she's going to race it or not. We'll just have to see. That's kind of her decision. So, Mike English Creek. Some people call it English Creek. Uh, that's mm-hmm. a very important part of the the graduation process. I mean, that's a, such a stout place to go racing my son liam back in 2016 i think 17 drove out there and i couldn't believe the amount of cars uh, that's in a really important place to, for knoxville as well uh yeah it is there's there they always have a real high car count um and uh there's like i said they always have good high, high car count and normally pretty good racing so, um, what is race day like for you? Do you have a certain way you like to go about things, mate? Are you a superstitious kind of guy, or do you like to have everything in order, or are you always running behind time? Um, I'm not really too superstitious, but I I have to have kind of everything in order, so to speak, as far as uh, everything's loaded and ready to go Friday night. So, so Saturday I kind of sleep in and and everything's ready, so I don't have to worry about too much before I get the racetrack. Favorite kind of music to listen to on race day? Do you listen to music much? Uh, I listen to all sorts of things. Yeah, um, it doesn't. I don't really have a favorite. I guess um, I go anywhere from Post Malone to to uh, Morgan Wallen. So it, I listen to about anything really. So no pump up music as such. No, no, don't have to do that. It's a shame, um, you know. The sport has evolved to a point where we all have 
uh, the uh, enclosed track because that's such an important part of what we do these days. But you know, the best advertising for our sport was always a, a race car on an open trailer on the highway. Yeah, it's definitely it definitely is kind of sad that we don't get to see that anymore. Um, but it's it's kind of evolved so much where everybody feels like they have to carry so many spares that that you just can't really get it done in a in an open anymore. Yeah, and look, you know, it, that's part of the way the planet has gone. But it's there's still nothing cooler, man. As a little kid, you would remember it as well. You know, when I, I mean, I get excited about Featherlight trailer on the highway. So you know, I'm like, or an Elliott yep. custom trailer. I'm like, is that got a race car in it? Like sometimes people, you know, sometimes people use Featherlight trailers for like their mowers and stuff. I'm like, you get all excited, <laughs> you pull it behind you, like, oh my god, oh my god, is it got a mower in that? That's just wrong. Yeah, I do. I still get excited anytime I see a race trailer or what I think is a race trailer anyway. And you know, my only pet hate about sprint cars when they get to the pits is a left rear on a right rear. I can't deal. You should never be allowed to take a picture of a car with two left rears on, ever. Well, I'm even worse then because I actually have I actually have front wheels on the rear when we unload. So makes it easier. Sorry, Wade. <laughs> I know practicality and all that stuff, but geez, we used to do a lot of uh, school visits, you know, where with teams where we would take their their cars, and sometimes you have to do that, you know. But it's always like, oh, please don't tell me anyone's looking. <laughs> yeah, I under I understand. I, I hate to. I try to. We try to get the tires on as quick as we can, just because I hate seeing a picture of my car with those tires on the back. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going racing this weekend, right? I'm just gonna I'm gonna make that call right now. We are going racing. I hope you're right. Hey, I need a bit of I need a bit of confidence here, Mike. You need to go. Yes, we're racing. Okay. Yes, we're racing. That's seen that. And at the liquor stand, there's a couple of cocktails with this sort of stuff: margaritas and bloody mary. So if you uh, if you happen to get the job done on Saturday, you need to head over to see Melinda and go. I need a methanol moonshine margarita to celebrate this situation uh do you feel good coming into the new season uh yeah i feel good um i think i think the class is wide open again um we have a lot of good drivers in it and uh you know obviously with tyler moving on and eric hanging it up for a while um that kind of opens up and now unfortunately i hear scotty's not going to be able to start the season or yeah. possibly race this year and uh definitely hoping that his his health um so really it's it's i think it's just wide open um i think gonna have probably a lot of different winners and hopefully we can get a few of them ourselves mike on the weekend i announced the australian wingless sprint championship at archerfield speedway in queensland now our wingless they're like a v6 so they're not they're not a chevy uh, they're not a small block, any of that sort of stuff. They're a V6, and they sound like a V6. There's probably over 400 of them in Australia now. Like, they're so popular. Oh, wow. The engine component, the most expensive part of the deal is, is not a factor compared to sprint car racing. But it, it's easy to write the class off and go, man, right? They're just pretend class or a hot dog class, you know, that kind of thing. And that would be a really big mistake because the culture of wingless racing is fantastic. Everyone is either coming through or they're they're entrenched in it and they spend just as much comparatively like per rata on their race car as anyone with a 410 or any of that sort of stuff. It would be easy for people to not see the beauty of pro sprint racing because you're like, ah, I want the 410s to come out. The pro sprint is a really, really important part of this sport right now, more so than ever. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, I think it's, I, I've told... Um, both John McCoy and Mike Profit this before. I think it's, I think they created probably the best class of sprint car racing in, in the last 25 years. Um, we just need to kind of get the word out about it. And yeah. um, like I said, the, the engine lasts, will last you two to three, possibly four seasons. Um, and for under $20,000. And that's, that's a pretty good deal. I know I had a, a sponsor friend of mine, uh, Kevin Wanders, used to build my engines for me. I think the last open 305 I put together cost me roughly with my discount, just part, just parts in it was, was close to 15,000. 
Um, and then, of course, it only lasted one season before it had to be freshened, and that was about another 3000 um, So yeah, I think you definitely get a lot more bang for your buck with the crate engine. I know some guys don't like it because they can't touch it. They can't do things to it. But overall, I think it's, it's a great package. And uh, I know we're kind of limited at Knoxville as far as how many cars we can get just due to, you know, in today's society, you got to try to run – maybe a two to three hour program. I mean, people want to get kind of in and out nowadays. And I, and I get that. Um, especially if you have little kids, you want to be able to take them and you yeah. want to be able to get them home. And, and so I understand that. So, but it sure will be nice to see us get 20, you know, 20, 25 cars a night. So I, I know that there's, there's guys out there spending it, at least as much, if not maybe five to 10,000 more, just going to be mod racing. Um, so there's hundreds of those in the state of Iowa. So I'm sure maybe five or 10 of those guys want to try a sprint car anyway. Outlaw carts as well, comparatively, you know, there's, there's people spending a lot of money on, and I'm not, not dissing them, but, uh, why wouldn't you get to race at the capital of the world? If you could, especially when you're the track champion, Mike Mayberry track champion, Knoxville raceway pro sprint. It's got a nice ring to it. Oh, thank you. It does have a nice ring to it. Hopefully we can get it done again this year. But yeah, like you said, um, to be able to race at Knoxville, um, probably in my opinion, the best track, dirt track in the country. Um, they have one of the best, if not the best safety crew yeah. in the country. And they also have the KRCO, a terrible organization, which yeah. does so much for us drivers that are in the points. Um, I, I, I know personally, that's one of the biggest reasons I race there is just for the fact of those two things is from for the krco and the uh safety people best place in america you can say best place in the world mate it's okay I agree. <laughs> yeah all right we'll call it the best place in the world then it's really great to talk to you mike we haven't we haven't bumped into each other anywhere near enough uh we need to do oh. that here and uh Maybe I can have a sneaky methanol moonshine with you at the end of the races. I'm looking forward to seeing how everyone goes this weekend. We're going to go racing. Just look at this weather in Australia, right? That's what we're going to – I'm just going to package it all up. Okay. It's coming to you, okay? If, this if, it, looks like, if it looks like that, we'll definitely go racing. Oh, we'll, we'll be definitely. Have, we'll definitely have that drink sometime, for sure. Absolutely. It's good to talk to you, Mike. Congratulations on your track championship, and uh, good luck to everyone. Be safe this weekend at the Sprint Car Capital of the World. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how you go, mate. All right. Thank you, Wade. I appreciate it. Now move your head to the side. I got to see that top wing. It looks pretty. Billy's Garage. I like who else you got on board there, real quick? Engler? Uh, yeah, that was our old, our old one. But um, Tim Engler was a big help. We actually had built and developed a Ford engine for the Open 305 stuff. And uh, Tim had built the injection for that. So um, Tim's a great, great guy. Always a good supporter. And um, so. Yep, just we've I've been very blessed with some good people around me. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to do them, do them some justice and get a couple wins again this year. Have a fantastic Wednesday night, everybody. Be safe. It's Thursday morning in Australia. Can't wait for the sprint car capital of the world to finally go racing. So John McCoy has got no time to be on that four wheeler on his farm drinking beer. He's going to have to get down there and run a race meeting. Good luck, buddy. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Good night, everybody. It's been a Wednesday night slide from Morissette, New South Wales, Australia. Beautiful day for it. everyone to Fremont in Iowa, which is near, uh-oh, choppers. Radar O'Reilly's a fictitious place, Ottumwa, Iowa. Good night, everybody.